Okay, hello guys. So tonight, while I'm working on some longer videos, doing some editing, I'm going to give you a nice, shorter, quicker video. And I'm going to explain to you the function of a Cub Cadet hydrostatic transmission. This is the old hydro pump out of the 107 I have for you here tonight. And so, I guess let's get right into it. We start out, of course, with the reservoir for the fluid. That's in the cast iron transmission case, which I don't have here with me, but from there it gets sucked up through a long cooling tube, or a short one depending on what you have on your tractor. This had a long one on it, and that gets pulled into this part at the bottom here, through that big hole in the center there on the bottom, and it of course goes to the filter. This is the old filter I pulled off the 107. As you can see it obviously shows the wear of sitting outside for 30 years. From there it goes to the charge pump. And this is the charge pump. It's a six tooth gear and the outer gear is seven. And that creates that gap and that pumps the oil up to the main drive assembly because this design with these piston blocks it cannot pull fluid up for itself so you need another smaller separate pump to pull fluid up to it so that it can work and if this were a later what's called a ported hydro pump this would also run say a hydraulic lift and there would be a couple of ports on here in these two spots up here but of course this is too old for that so it does not have them and the charge pump it's only supposed to be mounted in one way otherwise it will not work with the counterclockwise rotation that it receives from the engine however if you mount it the other way you can get it to work by spinning it clockwise instead of counterclockwise but that means you're not running the stock engine and uh Generally, it's best to keep the Kohler engine because the Kohler engine is pretty darn good. <laughs> so from there, it runs to the pump, the main pump. And this this is the main pump cylinder block. And there are, there are nine pistons in there each. And uh, what these do is they ride in this case in here of course through the shaft they don't have installed but they sit in there and they are on a movable what is called a swash plate which changes the angle of them in there and that's what does your forward and reverse so this is forward reverse forward reverse so it's set up that it goes it moves further forward than it does reverse and from there, it passes through the relief valves. Two valves. There are one for forward and one for reverse. And so the reason is there's two different circuits for forward and reverse fluid. And so they go on the top of this. And there's two ports for them. And from there they of course go to the motor block and this is the motor block as you can see it is missing the little slippers for the top of the pistons and that is because this is of course a failed hydro unit someone towed it you're not supposed to tow them so they broke unfortunately I don't have all the carnage but it left a bunch of little pieces of brass and junk laying around in there so that of course spins in here. In this case, on the other side, on the other end, and that spins on a fixed swash plate. It does not pivot, unlike the other one. And that makes sure it always rotates the same way. Or well, it doesn't always rotate the same way because it has difference between forward and reverse. And it makes sure that forward actually goes forward and reverse actually goes reverse. And so. 
I don't know the specifics on exactly how the fluid flows through, but if you take a look at this plate, oh, the cast iron portion, there's these two different, I assume, brass plates. This is the pump one up here, and then this is the motor one. And there is a difference, there's a key difference between these two plates. And so I'll start with the pump one here. I don't know if you can see it, but in this, on the edge of this slot, there's a little cutout area, and there's another one opposite of it. And those are important for fluid flow. So there's, the key is that there's two of them. But then, in this one, there's four. There's one on this slot, one on this slot, and then two more on the bottom ones. And the reason those are there is because two of them are for forward and the other two are for reverse. Because there's the two different directions that the fluid is coming from. So, from that motor block assembly, it drives the shaft with a pinion gear on the end of it. And that goes down to the differential in the hydro, and that's what drives the tractor. And of course, these have splines on them to hold them on to the shaft. Same with this one. And they, uh, the important thing that you're going to want to note with these is uh, Mine is going blank. Oh, these are spring loaded. There's a spring in the back of this. There's a spring. So that keeps pressure on the whole assembly when it's all bolted together. So when you unbolt it, this, this part actually pops up from the other part because the spring's under there, releasing tension. And so those are important. You gotta make sure there's tension on those. So yeah, that is the basic function of one of these hydro transmissions. You go from the oil case charge pump to the pump through the relief valves and to the motor and then out through this pinion into the rest of the gearing and then down to the wheels. Uh, something really important you're going to want to note I did not file this because this is of course a failed hydro, I have no reason to, but if you're rebuilding one of these, you want to make sure that you are absolutely as clean as you possibly can be. You don't want dirt in any of these because these are like very precise machine mechanisms and they don't like dirt in them. And of course, make sure your filter doesn't look like this. Of course, this obviously sh still shows 30 years worth of sitting outside on it. I think it leaks somewhere from it, too. So that's why they have a filter. Keep all gunk out of it, because you do not want gunk getting inside this transmission. Well, I guess that's about it. Last thing to note, I'm no expert. I mentioned that earlier, I do not know the specifics of how all the oil flows through this, but I can still explain to you the general way that these work, and if you watched all the way through, you now know too. I guess it's going to do it for now. I, uh, if you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like, I'd appreciate that, and if you like these old tractors and you want to see more, consider subscribing to my channel. I cover all of my tractors, and uh, I'm working on a couple more videos for you coming soon, so stay tuned for those. Uh, so until next time, I'll see you guys around.